Hello and welcome internet friends. My name is Huntiner and we are playing Distant Worlds 2. We have a very special game to play this time. It's going to be a lot different from the normal straightforward playthrough. I put some, some, some things in here that it's going to make it a little challenging, maybe even too challenging. It is very possible that I will lose this game. Uh, this green is pretty much normal. I switched from my usual thousand stars to 700 stars. I, I always have nebulas dense, especially when I play a spiral because it makes the spirals more clear. Um, we're using a pretty tight sectoring too, so the stars are all pretty close to each other. I'm gonna set the galaxy expansion to young and the technology level to level one. And then we're gonna do aggressive all the way to the top, chaos. I usually play it unstable, we're pushing it to chaos this time. I'm trying to make it so that I can't, uh, basically sit on my laurels and, uh, and go the whole game without having to inf uh, interact with the combat system at all, because that is my natural tendency towards play in this game, is to just sandbox it get some borders and then just build as many colonies as I possibly can. And this time we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to go to war. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. It's all going to be fight. We're moving up to extreme difficulty. Although I've played extreme difficulty on my own time. I've never played it in a recorded video. So this will be my first extreme playthrough for all of you viewers. I think that's going to be good. Normal research, because I don't think that matters. We're going to show everything, too, because I'm not- I don't like the random. There's no point in making it, uh, not visible if you're not playing random. And then tech trading, we're actually going to turn off. Because as you saw, if you watched my last series, especially near the end game, tech trading can be used to be really, really cheesy. Uh, in the last game, I think I was buying techs for- for, like, locations, for, like, locations that I found in the galaxy that were worth like a million. I was buying techs from other civs so that my techs would bump ahead of them to pre prevent them from getting victory points. It just, we're, we're just, none of that this game. We're, we're, we're gonna have to find our own techs. We're gonna either have to use our spies or find our own techs. One of the reasons why I tend to stop using spies in the mid and late game is because the spies percentage success is so low that it's easier to just trade for techs. And oftentimes you can trade things that are worth nothing for things you can actually use, which is not really what I would say a challenging way to play the game. We've moved our pirates up from normal to many because again, we want to be encouraged to do combat right away. We've moved our pirate strength up from normal to strong, which will mean we'll have a harder time fighting them. It's going to be a real drain on our economy. It could be a while before we have fleets that can actually stand up against the pirates, but building fleets will still be important because everybody in the whole galaxy is going to want to, going to want to fight all the time. And that, that means we have to be ready for that. Pirate proximity here is average. Just. It's fine if they appear at the regular time and no respawn rates. We've turned space creatures down one because we usually put it on many. If I'm going to have more pirates, I want to have less space creatures. I only have so many ships. I don't want to have to do like 12 things at the same time. It's hard enough to handle six. As for colonization, we're doing normal number of colonizable worlds because making this rare just makes it harder to win. It makes the game take longer, which is nice if you're not recording, but if you are recording, not so nice. Uh, independent colonies here, we're gonna stick that at rare, because one of the easy ways to cheese the game out early on is to get an independent colony that gives you the ability to colonize twice as many planets. That is harder when these are rare. Uh, that way, most of the time, the other races that you get are gonna have to be from conquest, meaning you're gonna have to wait the full assimilation time before you're gonna be able to use their benefit of, a, of landing on other planets. Now, because of the race I'm picking, uh, I'm not gonna have that problem so much. We'll talk about that now. I am playing Akuru. Akuro. I think Akuro is a better pronunciation of that. Ikkuro. Um, Ikuro. But we're playing militarist Ikuro. Why? Because it was suggested as one of the comments in the last video from the last series, and I thought that it was a wonderful idea. It's actually just straight out, straight out cool. I want, I want to fight. <laughs> with the least fighting nation. The idea being, the galaxy is filled with chaos, and our peace-loving and, uh, and spiritualist Ikuru are going out on a military conquest to tame the entire galaxy, so that once they've been shown through our military might the wonder of our utopian ideal, we can then transition to a harmonious utopia, and everybody can live in peace from that point forward. We are going to impe impose peace on the galaxy through the strength of our arms. There's a lot of problems with that. I mean, we should just start up here and talk about how bad some of that is. Uh, one of the real bad things here is that, uh, hmm. 
We, uh, where is it? Where is it? It's up here. Every time, every time we're at war, we're at minus 10 happiness. Every time we bombard, we're at minus 10 happiness. It's gonna make it hellishly hard for us to take planets. We're gonna actually have to worry about troop technology in order to con have any conquests work because there's gonna be a lot of situations where we're gonna have to just drop huge numbers of troops on a planet that is completely unbombarded to prevent, like, uh, a wave of recently conquested planets from just like flipping and becoming neutral. Hopefully, we don't have too much of a problem with that. We're playing Feudalist because Feudalist is the only. Well, I guess we could play Democratic, but the last game is Democratic. Feudalist is a militaristically aligned um, government that's actually available to the Ikuro. And uh, yeah, we're. It, it also gives us great bonuses for troops, which is really nice. We can have lots of them because of the maintenance. We can have lots of ships because of the maintenance, too. We get them back fast, and we recruit them fast, so we should... We should do okay militaristically. It, it's gonna be a problem, but it's not gonna be impossible to overcome. And the last... Wait, no, this is not the last thing. So, for us, just for us, we have lowered our own expansion back to starting, while the rest of the galaxy will be young. And we have lowered our tech level to pre-warp, while the rest of the galaxy is at level 1. Yeah, this is going to be a tough game. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be the toughest game that I've ever played, even the toughest game I've even played in my own time. So there's that. We're not going to we're not going to fix the ga the number of enemies or anything. Then looking here, we're going to turn uh economy and population down to 100%, up to 100%, I should say, which means you have to have more of those things for it to count as part of your 15% uh Score, and then we're going to turn actual territory held down to 50% so that planets that you hold will be worth more of the 15%. I even considered putting this down to 25%. And then we're going to put our victory threshold to... Uh... Last game I was talking about how it should be 40, and that would normally be true with the regular settings, but in this case, putting it at 40 could mean that I lose the game real fast. I don't know if that's something I want to risk. 50 might be better. Like, it's the compromise between last game's 60. The normal is 70. Last game's 60 and the 40 that I think is better for recording. I think this is fine. I can always just call the game at 40 if it doesn't work out, like I did last time. Uh, it, it, because these are arbitrary, right? When you get the screen is when you get the screen. You know when you've won the game. You can just look at your, your victory conditions and tell when you've won the game long before the, the victory screen ever comes up. So we're not going to do any year limits or anything. We're going to leave the general story events on, but we're going to turn the uh, race-specific story events off. Um, because... And I'm just going to be frank here. I don't like the Ikuro uh, race-specific story at all. I, it just it interferes with my play style, and I think that it's it's just too much of an advantage if you actually succeed at it, and it's too much of a hindrance if you don't. So, in a non-spoiler way, I'm basically saying I'm turning this off because I don't like it. That's, that's all. The rest of the stories we'll leave on, though, because they, they're all the same as usual and very interesting. So let's start the game and see what our beginning position is like. I'm kind of excited for this game. It's going to be very different. I'm very hopeful. I'm thinking that this first episode is just going to be 30 minutes uncut. I know I normally cut my episodes for, for being condensed, but there's going to be so much to cover in this first 30 minutes just about establishment and the types of things that I'm going to want to do that we're we're just going to probably play through and, and post it uncut, which is, I know, a rarity. It, it might be, also it might be splice cut, right? Like I might cut some gaps out just to make the, just just to make my wonderful commentary more inviting to people so that they don't have to wait during my long and arduous pauses. Which, generally speaking, I cut out for your sake, but but I may not do this time. All right, let's actually look at what's going on. Okay, it's time to get started. Here is our Ikuro Union, our feudalistic government. Wonderful. This is going to be an interesting game, so in spite of the fact I put myself on the outer rim, they sorted me into the middle, which is acceptable. Let's, let's look at our, uh, our galactic situation here before we look at our planet too closely. Just pause that before time starts to roll away on us. So we're here. Okay, it's fine. We're going to orient things to the center of the galaxy is to our south because it's just easier to realign it when it gets inevitably twisted around. Got a few stars around us. I got 
a bit of a gap between us and the outer ring. We're actually in a position pretty similar to where we were last game. You could definitely see the effect of having less stars, though, even though it's more dense. Which is good. Uh, that should be helpful in making sure that the game turns out the way we want it to. I think we're going to focus on sort of... I might try to break through to this cluster of scars, stars up here. I think might be interesting. Like, sort of try to make this the starting area that I explore. But we'll see. It, it's all, it's not something I can really decide because they're going to, there's going to be enemies near me and those enemies are going to decide what directions I can go in. Looking at our planet here. Oh, wow. That's, that's a neat start. One of the great things about the Akuru is that they have very good habitability relative to other races. Like they have very good habitability on many kinds of planets. It's very likely there will be, especially with, with the continental moon right next to us, there's a very good chance that we will have a second colony, our own starting area, and that means that I can do one of those cool things that uh, almost never matters, but is worth noting. I'm just going to do this now. Am I doing No. No, we'll, we'll do it later. But yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. There's also a... Uh, Ocean planet out here that's useful. The tundra ice planet probably won't be useful to us. I don't think much else in the system will be useful to us. That's fine. Just starting wise, we might as well immediately do the first things that you begin every new game with, which is uh, take this explorer and have them explore the large gas giant nearby so that we can see if we have um, Carlton gas there. That is our only ship that's available, which is fine. Start our research projects. Now, this game is going to be very different because I expect the galaxy to be very hostile. And that means working towards weapons qu pretty quickly. We want to use our focused, our fusion beams because we should always try to use the weapons of our, of our, uh, our species special tech. The other special tech we have that isn't suitability and planet settling related is uh did i pass it no it's below we'll try to find it up here there we go assault it is different assault pods these uh splinters these these splinters here so that's good yes yes so we might do we might do some uh, assault stuff. I think that can be interesting. Like, we might we might try to, like, actually take ships. If we end up fighting a lot of pirates early on, too, we could take ships and use them to uh, dismantle them to gain faster tech advancement. I'm trying to form a plan here for what we're going to do, because it's, it's, not, it's not usual, and I want to focus on the unusual parts about it, right? So we might, we might want to focus on... boarding, right? In order to board... We need, let me see. So we need the one that is like where, 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 where? It's not you. I'm completely lost in this menu. I'm always completely lost in this menu. There it is. Basic transport systems uh, gives you the, uh, the passenger and the true compartment. So we, we need this to board. Huh. So what is our plan going to be? I mean, it always has to be this first. There's just no avoiding that. It's just the way the game works. But after that, after that, we probably want to do shields. It's very similar to our queue last game. We're going to do shields next. After shields, I think we might try to do... I think we might do basic transport systems and then we'll do the second warp engine i think is how we'll handle it i think that's good these three are enough for now though and then we're just gonna let this go for a bit because there's not much we can do at this time so feudalism oh we get ship boarding for no that's that's interesting do we get our version of ship boarding or do we have to take the regular version we absolutely get the assault pod technology that we don't normally get instead of us getting our, uh, that's interesting. 
That's really interesting. We gotta add ship maneuvering, but we probably won't do it in this order. Did I add armor plating by accident? I don't know what happened there. Well, armor plating is probably fine too. But th this doesn't have to be for sure, right? We'll we'll sort it. We'll make sure it gets all sorted. So we have starfighters, zero combat research, and shipboarding because uh, we're gonna tend towards gonna tend towards using a lot of troops in this game. It's gonna be necessary, especially since we can't bomb. The fact we can't bomb means we're gonna need lots of strong troops. Something that I almost never focus on. Let's just look up here and see what ship designs we have and just make sure we take the stuff that are supposed to be ours off. The beginning of the game should always have some of this on it. I... I don't care about bombers, but I'm gonna take it off so they don't keep throwing them at me, and I don't care about interceptors because we're not gonna do fighters anytime soon. Maybe not even at all. Mining station, we gotta upgrade the mining station. And what we want to do is put on small mining engines. This is, like, always the best idea. Might take off that wave bomb. I have no defenses right now. Hmm. Hmm. How many cargo bays? Has two cargo bays. I don't like having less than two cargo bays. So I guess we'll take off one of these, uh, one of these torpedoes as well, which makes us work. And I don't have enough energy collectors, and we're gonna have to fit shields at some point, too. This is not the best. Let's, let's see if we can consider some kind of, like, alternative. We have medium particle beam. Maybe we put that in. And then maybe just one torpedo someplace? Like, there? That's too much. It's too much. Well, I guess we could just put on the uh, energy collector that we're missing. And hopefully that'll be enough. Wants us to add a commerce center, but we don't have one, and we probably won't have one for a while. We do not have a lot of opening spots up here. We don't need two fuel cells. Something I always need to remember that fuel cells are not that important for space stations since if they have enough energy collection they use that primarily to basically fund fill everything I think this will do for now they might do the no large too small thing to get some space for shields when that time comes got one medium particle beam which is not very strong It'd be better if we took, like, two plasma torpedoes and a small particle beam. Okay, yeah, that's okay. For now. For now. Alright. I don't know. This is a mining station, right? It doesn't need two docking bays. So, we could keep that space, I think, maybe, for defenses. Yeah, this is what we're going to do for now. We're going to save that, and we're going to tell them don't automatically upgrade it because we want to handle the ship. We're going to edit our starting ship. You can see their starting ships have the... And I like the design, like physical out, layout I like, but they have two large weapons on an escort, which is a lot of weapons. But they're probably not going to usually have enough power to run two large weapons. And additionally, they get one engine, which is just bad, and only one sensor, which is pretty normal. But if you can see, if you just compare this to what you see, like what we sh had in the last game or any other game that I played, there's not many components here. These are not good hulls. Um, they're, they're pretty bad hulls, actually, especially for combat. But we got to do what we got to do. We're not going to use wave bombs, even though wa I mean, we should use wave bombs. Wave bombs are actually quite strong. Uh, let me see. What is this? One of the things that's really interesting about the start is the medium particle beam and the small particle beam are very similar in their damage output. The medium particle beam, like, it's going to do its damage faster because it has higher damage per hit but slower hits. So that probably means this is good. We have no defenses. We can't do anything about that. We have nothing else. We're going to have to have room for a, for a drive here. So we're just going to 
save this. That's fine. We don't need to do anything with the research station. Looking at the small spaceport. Uh, we might want to edit this. Okay. Just looking, we take the wave bombs off because we don't care about them really. Maybe put on a couple more particle beams. So where do we have these? So those two particle beams are up there. I put a particle beam here. And a particle beam there. We have no room for... <laughs> yeah, and we need a proximity scanner, scanner as well. Uh, we're not doing fighters. Like, we're going to be avoiding fighters on purpose. I could keep room for... Hmm. I don't need that. I could keep room for... For defenses, I could add more weapons, but I think for now this will be good. It would be really cool if I could find a way to fit on a, a mining station, because having these on these means that you get a little bit more oomph from your, uh, from your mining locations on your planets. But, no, I think this is going to be good for now, so we'll just save that. And I think everything else is fine. Um, do I care about taking the weapons off of the constructors and the exploration ships? Not this time. Not this time. Now we want to build ourselves our first space station. And until it's finished, we're not going to bother to queue any ships. We'll let the civilian economy use the planet to queue its ships for now. And plus, there's that one construction ship that it queues automatically at the beginning. I'm rolling all over the place, and I shouldn't be. I just want to be able to see everything that's happening. We've already set this to one, so we'll just watch him go out there and talk about this game. So we're going to have some difficulties. Our ships are going to be interesting. They're going to be strong but slow. Uh, and they're going to lack... They're going to lack general... Um, components, which means that, because they have, well, at least for a while, because the escort hulls, as I showed you, are not very good, we could have a problem having enough power to run the kinds of weapons we want to run. Could be a big problem. And it's going to be a while before we really see much in the way of conflict. Hopefully we see our pirates pretty soon, though. I think we're going to crash the early warp field experiments just to get things underway. This is going to be an interesting game. I'm going to be trying to be aggressive on purpose, but I also think that with the settings I started at the beginning of the game, I'm not going to be able to, as I've said before, sit back on my laurels, you know, and take break, just let the game run and, and chat a little bit. I'm going to actually have to play it, especially if I'm going to do some of the things that Ikuro can do Ikuro can do well in uh, combat, and one of those things is boarding. Uh, if I'm going to board, boarding requires actual, like, micro in combat. Especially if you don't have lots of ion weapons on your ship. Because you gotta, you gotta switch. <laughs> you gotta switch to boarding. So your weapons don't, you gotta, like, make sure that you don't kill the, the, the enemy ships while you're shooting their shields down. So that your guys have a chance to actually board while the shields are down. There's going to be a lot of different things in this game, though. For example, I am going to probably do a pre-colony ship colonization this time. Because you don't actually need a colony ship to colonize. I'll just show you what I mean right now. Since, you know, since we're talking about it. You can do this. We're going to add new. We're going to go to construction ship, I think, is the right one. Usually that's what we do. We don't want to do manual. We'll do... Add new, auto-generate, a construction ship. I didn't click construction ship. So, we're going to look at this, right? We're going to... 
I think we need that basic crew system. That's not what I was trying to remove. I'm gonna remove this cargo bay though. Has to have a cargo bay. I keep forgetting that. That's minimum. We're gonna remove his weapons. And we're going to try to fit a colonization module. If we can fit a co what's the defect? We need a reactor, so I guess we take off a fuel cell in order to put on a basic space reactor like that. Need more crew now. We're over. Take another fuel cell off because it's never going to leave the system. Probably take the proximity sensors off because it's not going to ever leave the system. So to remember I said I wasn't going to put any cuts in this. Well, that kind of changed because I accidentally paused during the building of of my ships after I finished the colony ship. And so we we skipped a little bit. Uh, the warp technology is finished now. We finished exploring the gas giant. It has Carlson and a new research station being built at it. I think the Carlson station is already finished. Let's just get right back into it because, uh, really, the, the beginning of this, this process is very slow, so that skip doesn't make much difference at all. Okay, so we've got our warp drives now. We've made some small upgrades here to the ship designs. We've added warp drives to all of our major ships, our explorer, our construction ship, and our escort. Nothing else has really changed except that. Uh, just added those warp, warp skip drives, and we bought three each. Well, we bought two more explorers and two more construction ships. Looking at this, we can... Oh, see, that suitability of 22 right there means that we're probably going to buy... A construction ship like right away uh, like a colony ship right away I, it might be just simply put too expensive so proto colonizer we need carbonite krypton and argon so we'll have to explore the system before we can do that but we are going to be doing that pretty soon uh, one of the great advantages of the ikuru ikuro ikaro monkey boys, our friends, ourselves, our harmonious, warlike, wonderful monkeys, is that they really, 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 really get a boost in colonization early on. They don't need friends to do that. But there are going to be a lot of other disadvantages that are going to hurt us. In fact, the fact that our desire to go to war is going to give us a constant problem with happiness that we're going to need to contest with. Because even if you can manage happiness, you're almost always managing happiness by lowering taxes, which means by not making enough money. So that's going to be an eternal problem for us in this playthrough. Not enough taxes. Not enough money. But hopefully we can create a military force to be reckoned with. We can bring peace to the galaxy through war. We can shoot the conflict out of all of our enemies and when they realize that they can't fight us that their strength and their strength wanes and they just want to rest we will welcome them to rest in the bosom of our harmonious kingdom that that my friends is going to be the theme of this game the kuru warlike peace bringers yeah lots of troops lots of troops something we don't usually do lots of boarding ships to make it take advantage of those cool uh hull shards that they get to do oh our first our first hyper jump that's actually a good place to end the episode you know first hyper jump just took place all right let's just zoom out a bit here Trying to find the one I'm looking for and see where our first ship went. Is it you? Nope, it was. Uh, was must have been a uh, a millet. What? What's happening? Uh, you can auto explore. There we go. Look at you. Heading out there. Good job. What kind of planet is this? What have you chosen for your first location to explore? Oh, rocky metallic. Okay, I'm good with that. Yeah, so we're gonna begin to explore our our local area here. Learn about our solar system, and then probably 
sometime early in the next episode, deal with the pirates. My name is Huntiner. Welcome to the channel if you've never been here before. Please consider giving the episode a like if you like it, or leaving a comment if you would uh, like to make some suggestions or just want to participate. I appreciate likes and comments very much. If you've been here before, if it's not your first time and you've liked my content in the past, please consider supporting the channel with a subscription. I appreciate them very much. Although, the thing I appreciate more than subscriptions and more than likes and comments is just views in general. I'm happy to see every time somebody comes out and checks out my content. I do sincerely hope to see you the next time we're here with our Ikuro monkey warriors playing Extreme Difficulty Distant Worlds 2. Bye for now.